So today I asked ChatGPT to pretend it is the host of a podcast on software development and they asked me questions about MariaDB. Uh, here's how it went. Welcome back to The Craft of Code, the podcast where we dig into the tools, technologies, and ideas shaping how we build software today. I'm your host, and joining me is someone who's been at the crossroads of code and community for years, Alejandro Duarte, developer relations engineer at MariaDB PLC. Uh, he's also a published author, a Java expert, and someone who spent a good chunk of his time helping developers get the most out of open source databases. Alejandro, great to have you here. Let's jump right in. There's this idea floating around that MariaDB is just a drop-in replacement for MySQL. You and I both know that's not quite the full picture. Uh, so tell me, from a developer's point of view, what's actually interesting or different about MariaDB today? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, it is true. MariaDB is not only a fork of MySQL. It's much more than that. It has more uh, storage engines like Column Store and MyRocks that are integrated uh, in uh, MariaDB. You can install these very easily. Uh, it also has a very powerful uh, um, database proxy, very, very powerful one. I would dare to say maybe the most powerful one in terms of features. It also has native uh, vector search and uh, storage, which is uh, very proficient, very fast. Uh, it also is backed by a foundation and also by an organization, as well as many other companies that are uh, working uh, by contributing code, uh, patches, new features, into the uh, core of MariaDB. So these are very uh, big differences, uh, I would dare to say. There's also uh, differences in the SQL dialect itself. So I think the SQL dialect that MariaDB has is better than MySQL's. Yeah, that part about the SQL dialect is especially interesting because most developers just assume all MySQL-like databases speak the same SQL. Then, but in practice, the differences can really matter. Things like common table expressions, window functions, or even syntax for JSON handling, those can affect how expressive or maintainable your code is. And you brought up something that really doesn't get enough attention, storage engines. Most developers think of the database as a monolith with one internal model. In fact, but MariaDB lets you pick, pick the right engine for the job almost like choosing the right collection type in Java or the right data structure in Python. So let's dig into that a bit more. Can you give an example of when a developer might actually want to switch to something like Column Store or MyRocks in a real application? Absolutely, yeah. So MariaDB has several storage engines, meaning that you don't need to install other databases to handle different workloads. So instead of that, you have one single database, which can be replicated and all that cool stuff, but you have only one connector. That means your applications won't become database polyglots. This simplifies the whole thing so much. Uh, but in terms of which uh, storage engines are useful when, well, Column Store is a storage engine for analytics. So it's like having uh, an index on every column in your uh, database on every table that's declared to use a uh, column store. So that's one example. It's gonna interrupt. Right, and that bit about not turning your app into a database polyglot is such a <clears throat> practical point. Developers love the idea of using the best tool for the job, but maintaining separate connectors, drivers, and operational quirks across systems can get out of hand fast. With MariaDB, you kind of get the best tool flexibility within one system. That's underrated. Now, in Column Store, you said it's like having an index on every column. That's a pretty striking mental model. Um, so in that case, if someone's building, say, a reporting dashboard that slices data in different ways, they'd probably get huge performance gains by using Column Store instead of InnoDB. And also, does that mean they can mix Column Store and InnoDB in the same database? Or do they need to set up something separate? That's a great observation. Yeah, uh, it is exactly for that. It makes analytical queries um, run much, much faster. Uh, you can combine them in a single um, uh, database server. 
So you can even run um, cross engine SQL queries. So one query that uses one table that's supposed to use column store and another one that uses InnoDB, and maybe another one that uses area or my rocks, which is for um, you know, write heavy workloads. You can combine them in a single SQL query. Now, the way you would separate uh, your workload or the topology would separate the data, it depends on the actual requirements. So usually what you want is to spread the computational aspect of column store across multiple servers for uh, almost like near, or uh, I would even think it's like near growth. So uh, that's independent on how you use it. All this is transparent for the developers, especially if they are using something like uh, max scale, which uh, isolates all the topology. And then the software developer, they think they are talking to one single endpoint, but they have a, uh, uh, reliable and uh, performant and um, uh, uh, database capable of multiple workloads in one single endpoint. Yeah, that's the dream right there. Um, developers coding like it's just one database while under the hood there's a distributed system doing all the heavy lifting. And I like that you mentioned max scale. It's almost like a software defined interface for your database topology, right? Kind of how Kubernetes abstracts away the actual machine layout from a container's point of view. Uh, with max scale, the app doesn't need to care if reads are hitting in ODB on one node and analytics are going to column store on another. That's a level of abstraction that's both powerful and rare. Uh, let's stay on max scale for a second. From a developer's point of view, what kind of problems does it actually solve? Like, when would you say, yeah, this app should use max scale? Uh, yeah, so the main point of MaxScale is to isolate all the database topology and to automate some things. So, <clears throat> for example, automatic failover. So let's say you have several nodes there and uh, queries can be automatically split between reads and writes. So you uh, send writes to the primary node and the reads to the replicas, um, maybe to scale uh, reads, right? And, and so... That's very easy to do with max scale because it's completely transparent. It happens automatically. Now, let's say one of the replicas goes down or even better, one, the primary server goes down because things fail. The operating system could fail, the hardware network, whatever could, could fail. So let's say that node, the, the primary node handle, handling the uh, writes goes down. Max scale detects this automatically and reconfigures one of the replicas to be the new primary and starts receiving uh, the writes. Moreover, there is something called transaction uh, replay. That means that if you were in the middle of a transaction, you send a write to a database cluster, right? And at that moment, it uh, went down. You don't have to implement as a developer, you don't have to implement like a, 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 a NIF somewhere or a try catch that's gonna retry this in case it goes down. Max scale migrates that uh, in-flight transaction to the new, uh, newly uh, configured uh, uh, primary server automatically and returns the result. There's gonna be a, a little bit of a lag there, but no errors in the application. This is automatically, you don't have to touch anything that's super cool and also when the uh, previously uh, primary server uh, uh, recovers it it's incorporated again as a replica automatically by by max scale so that's uh, that's pretty cool these are only some of the things that you can do there are many many more features i have a webinar on that and a video on youtube if you are interested The automatic transaction replay part is seriously underrated because, yeah, any developer who's had to write fallback logic for a failed transaction knows how messy that gets. Especially if you're trying to preserve atomicity or handle retries gracefully without causing duplicate duplicate inserts or weird side effects. And the best part, um, you don't even have to change your app code. Uh, just let MaxScale sit in front of your cluster and handle it. Um, that's the kind of thing that normally takes a big architectural shift or a message queue workaround. So let's flip the perspective for a second. Um, a lot of developers are fine with just using a managed cloud database these days, RDS or AlloyDB or whatever. Uh, what's your take on that? 
why would someone still care about things like max scale or column store when cloud databases abstract a lot of this already? That's a great question. Well, these hyperscalers, what they do is they take the uh, MariaDB community server, which is the free uh, GPL uh, software that everybody can use, and it's uh, it's really powerful, right? But they are not experts in the actual configurations of MariaDB necessarily, and they are not experts in your requirements sometimes. So it's like they just uh, take this prepackaged software and put it there in their servers, and that's it they are not going to give you the chance to use max scale, for example. And so there is, there is that. Now, um, there are options for you to, um, to deploy these in the cloud with max scale and all that, and we can uh, help with this. Uh, but there are also companies that need a hybrid approach sometimes, uh, and sometimes they divide the data. Something can be in the cloud, something needs to be on-prem because of, well, reasons. And uh, it's a great option to have something that you can uh, just one click away and have your database, but then you are not fully uh, experiencing the power of, of MariaDB in, uh, in, in the way that you would if you have access to all these multiple storage engines, to the configurations uh, that you can adjust in MariaDB, and also to uh, the max scale uh, database proxy, which, like I said, it's like the secret sauce here. Yeah, it's like the difference between renting a pre-furnished apartment versus designing your own workspace. Managed services are convenient, but you're limited to what the provider thinks you need. And sometimes that's fine until it isn't especially when you hit scaling pain points, complex workloads, or need hybrid data strategies like you mentioned. Also, the fact that cloud providers don't include max scale by default is kind of like buying a sports car and not getting access to the gearbox that actually lets it shift properly under load. Um, you can drive it, sure, but not the way it was meant to be driven. So that brings me to something a little more developer-centric. Let's say I'm a back-end dev building a data-heavy app I already know SQL. What's something you think I don't know about MariaDB, but I should? Something that would make me go, huh, I didn't expect that. Oh, well, definitely the storage engines, right? And and max scales and storage engines, because that could make the difference between a query, for example, let's say an analytical query for a report that takes, uh, say, 48 hours to complete against a query that's going to uh, take only maybe one minute. So it's a huge difference. Um, and also, well, max scale because of what we mentioned before, right? The the, the uh, tranquility that it gives you uh, to know the database is going to be there no matter what. It's going to heal automatically and it's going to uh, uh, make requests to the nodes that are available. And it's going to keep your app running even when things go sideways. That's something devs often fully appreciate until they've been paged at two in the morning because the primary database went down and their failover script didn't kick in. Also, that example you gave, turning a 48-hour query into a one-minute response, that's massive. Um, most developers would look at that kind of performance gain and assume they need to do something drastic. Rewrite their queries, throw in a caching layer, or buy faster hardware. Uh, but here, it's just a matter of picking the right engine within the same database. Um, it kind of flips the whole optimization conversation on its head. All right, let's talk about for a sec. Um, it feels like every database vendor is now saying, we support vectors, but MariaDB has native vector storage and search built in. What does that actually mean for developers? True. So what that, that means that you don't need to bring another system, another database, and that your applications don't need to bring another connector with all the complexities like different licensing, different... Um, schemas of uh, maybe um, deployment uh, uh, or maybe to communicate with these uh, databases. Some of them might not offer a SQL layer, for example. Um, you cannot do, um, you cannot uh, mix the uh, data in the same database with uh, one single query. Um, you need to be aware of how releases go with one database and now with a new one. Uh, maybe um, 
the quality of these two databases is a bit different. And so there's a lot of complexity, basically. Uh, that's the difference with MariaDB, that you have all these storage engines, and you also have a vector uh, database uh, uh, baked in uh, natively in MariaDB. <coughs> Right, and that really echoes the same story we've been circling. Keep the complexity down without giving up power. Everyone's rushing to build vector-based search into their apps, but stitching together a traditional SQL database plus something like Pinecone or Reviate or whatever, it's fragile, it works, but it's brittle. What you're saying is MariaDB lets you store documents, structured data, and vector embeddings all in the same place, queried in one go, with real transactions, constraints, and SQL on top. That's that's actually a pretty elegant setup for developers trying to build something fast and reliable. So let's zoom out a little. If you had to give developers one reason to try MariaDB today, like spin it up and build something, what would that reason be? Well, I think it's fun to play with MariaDB. It's just fun. It's easy. It's fun. And then you have all these pieces, like Lego pieces that... Uh, you can put together to build exactly what you want, and the process of doing of of doing these configurations and playing around with the pieces, it's a lot of fun. So just because of that, that's already cool. But beyond that, the results speak uh, by themselves. So we have many uh, uh, success stories uh, that show that MariaDB actually works. So MariaDB powers. Uh, giant uh, companies, huge banks with tons and tons of transactions per second, um, online stores, authentication systems, even uh, 5G antennas, uh, Wikipedia runs on uh, MariaDB, all this information is stored on uh, in, in MariaDB servers. So from fun to actual results, I think, well, you got it all. So it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, it works and um, yeah, why not exploring uh, something uh, new and then you have a new uh, skill set, a new tool that could be very useful in, the, uh, in your uh, next uh, projects. <laughs>